Uh, thank you very much. So my slides aren't there yet? Oh, okay. Um, so I want to show one case uh, for the Karelian annuloplasty. This is an 81-year-old female patient. He, uh, she had two heart failure hospitalizations prior, and functional micro regurgitation was diagnosed two years ago. Uh, the patient had dyspnea during daily activity, but also at rest. And regarding past medical history, uh, the patient had a STEMI in February of 2015, which was treated by cabbage. Uh, the ECG showed a sinus rhythm and a heart rate of 75 per minute, and there was T-wave inversion in V2 to V6, and the echocardiography showed a normal LV with an EF of 80%, both atria were dilated, and there was moderate tricuspid regurgitation with an SPUP of 30 millimeters of mercury, had moderate to severe uh, mitral valve regurgitation with mild calcification of the mitral annulus as well as both mitral leaflets, and the cause of the uh, mitral regurgitation is mainly functional. Um, the annulus diameter was measured at 2 times 2.5 centimeters with an area of 5.1 square centimeters. And um, the vena contractor was 6 millimeters with a PISA of 5 millimeters and the EROA 0.6 centimeters squared. <clears throat> so now we start the case. Ah, sorry. First the angiography, the RCA is occluded, the LAD is occluded, and the bypasses are um, patent. So what we have prepared, we have a, a coronary diagnostic catheter in the groin, and uh, we need this to make sure during the procedure that we are not obstructing the uh, circumflex artery or other branches from the right coronary artery. And we have in the internal jugular vein on the right side a nine French sheath. The, the guiding catheter which comes with the device is like uh, shaped like a multi-purpose. It's a nine French uh, a catheter, and... Uh, you can see that I have inserted into that nine French catheter a, nine, a seven French multipurpose uh, catheter in order to have a smooth transition between the tip of the guide and the diagnostic catheter. Inside of the system, there is a, a, a glide wire, hydrophilic glide wire, with an angled tip. So now I'm introducing the system into the nine French sheath. This is the trauma wire. It may be that we are already in. <laughs> wow. So that's how interventionists cannulate the coronary sinus. So now I'm advancing the assembly of seven French multipurpose and sheath. I want to turn the camera. Have to Forrest, turn if it you or... rotate the nine French, it's going nicely though, of course. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes at this part is sometimes difficult, but in, you know, it's very easy because it's a live case, so that's why it's so easy. It's okay. It's okay. So I'm just advancing here more and more. So now, again, this is the way how interventionists do this. Now let's do a diagnostic angiogram, and then Evan will be ready to do some measurements and the decide. Marker catheter. Yeah, we need a marker catheter for that. Back from your catheter? Yes. Okay. Yes, and it's de-aired now. Okay. Good, so now we need some, uh, some contrast. Should we go to chordal projection at this yeah. time? Uh-huh, chordal, uh, maybe 30 degree chordal, no, and areo chordal, uh, LAO, so. Okay, sinner. I have sinner. Uh, it moved down now, oh, okay. Well, it's not that long, you see, I mean. Well, uh, Evan, can you count that? So we've said the coronary okay. sinus ostium is roughly in this zone here. I've drawn uh, some marks on the screen to indicate that. And if we count the marks on the marker catheter here, this is actually uh, just about nine centimeters right there. So we may want to come uh, a little bit further. Nine is enough. It's enough for a uh, placement, but we could consider going back to the more advanced position. Uh, should we do another measurement with the... I would. Yeah. So I like this position, it gives us an extra two centimeters. I think this is gonna be nice. So because of this bulbous segment right here at the yeah. um, distal end of the great cardiac vein, I, I really think this is a nice place for a distal anchor because of the favorable anatomy for the anchoring. Mm. Uh, the other thing that's really nice to see here is that we have about 11 centimeters uh, from the ostium all the way up to the junction between the great cardiac vein and the anterior interventricular vein. So using a six uh, centimeter device, that will allow us to pull roughly five centimeters of tension. All right, so I think we have some uh, measurements here. So the average uh, diameter of this segment, this distal segment here, is uh, just under seven millimeters. I'm getting about 6.8.
right here. <clears throat> and then for the proximal segment where we'd like to place our proximal anchor, I'm getting a, an average diameter, again, across this two centimeter length, I'm getting an average diameter of about uh, nine millimeters. Mm -hmm. So we have a sizing chart that indicates which device we should select. And the sizing chart is telling me that we should have a 12 by 18. So we'll have a 12 millimeter distal anchor right here, and we'll have an 18 millimeter proximal anchor right here. And <clears throat> the device itself is only six centimeters long. So it will start here, and with no tension, we'll go six centimeters. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the proximal anchor will be sheathed inside the delivery system right here, and then we'll pull tension, plicating the tissue, and deploy the proximal anchor, and then between the distal anchor and the new proximal anchor location, that's where the tissue will be plicated, placing uh, a force between them as well as a, a radial force inward. So now we're retrieving the uh, uh, diagnostic catheter, screwing off the Y connector. This is the only device you can use in cardiology where there's no need to flush at all. So now I attach this uh, loading tool to the catheter. Now small... Okay, so now uh, I will advance the device under fluoro control because sometimes what happens is that the sheath is actually pulled out, sometimes it's moved in when you advance the device. Okay, now you see kind of it's going around the curve. The device is now at 6 o'clock on the screen. And it, at this time, in 2 centimeters more, then you will see when you look at my hands, that now the loading tool goes into the handle. It's actually moving forward. Do you see that? It's moving That's forward. what I'm talking about, yeah. yeah. So I'm pulling back a little bit. And you can also That's make micro adjustments during the distal anchor deployment as well. So now the loading tool engages the handle and uh, there's a white and a black arrow. So I'm about uh, two centimeters away from the tip of the sheath of the guide. Evan, maybe you can point out the distal anchor to them? Yeah. <clears throat> so we can see the distal anchor is collapsed. It's folded inside the nine French delivery sheath here. Yeah. So the distal anchor crimp tube is right here. You can see that density. And we have about two centimeters to go until we get to the end of the nine French delivery sheath. So the, the anchor is actually folded within the catheter and will passively expand once it's unsheathed at the tip of the nine French catheter. Can you show them the pr proximal anchor crimp tube? Sure. So the proximal anchor is also sheathed and the proximal anchor crimp tube is down here. So, so now, now I'm at the tip of the sheath and you see that it came back a little bit. So I'm continuing to rotate the thing into the black direction. Now the anchor is coming out. At the same time, I'm gently pulling on the guide. This is a really nice position. You're exactly at the target zone. Everything looks good. There it is. Yeah, it's there expanded. It is. So huh? it's out. Okay. And now we need to lock it. So now I'm rotating into the right direction. I felt a little click That's now. It. I so think I'm in. So now you can go the other direction mm -hmm. again to move the catheter away from your lock. And then so we'll see. Now I'm rotating again to the black direction and gently pulling on the guide. At the same time, I'm slowly pulling back the guiding catheter. I have to go another about two centimeters from now on. Yeah, so here's the proximal crimp tube. We want to take the tip of the delivery catheter right about to the center of the proximal crimp tube there. Right where the blood pressure cuff is overlying things. Exactly. So I think this That's should good. be fine now? Perfect, yeah. Okay. So now uh, I'm ready to pull on the, on the whole system, including the guiding and the device. Yeah, as you see too, the, there's a pretty uh, significant change in the shape of the vein. So we're affecting the anatomy in a significant way with the tension. So the proximal crimp tube has maybe another centimeter until we're at maximum tension. That, that looks good to me. So I'm keeping that tension now. 
Okay, so you've reached the mechanical stop of the yeah. knob there. So can you look at his hands here? So now he's moving to the second knob. And now he's got a control knob which is going to push out the proximal anchor. So you're starting to see the proximal anchor coming out. Now you can rotate back so that we can see the lock. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get that pusher catheter just out of the way, but you're basically done with a K. Okay, so what do you think? Well, I think it's locked. You know, the, the best way to check, though, a nice projection to do that is the LAO cranium. Yeah, so I'd say it's locked in this uh, image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of a play there, but that's about the appropriate uh, mm -hmm. distance for it. And in this image, too, we can see the arrowhead, which is the locking feature that stabilizes the mm -hmm. eyelet. So I'm, I'm convinced. So we are ready to release? Do, you uh, do, do we need the final angle? Inject. Barely filling, yeah, not not much to see. Okay, but what I mean, what we are looking for is basically uh, to make sure that no coronary arteries are obstructed, and that's pretty clear. Here. So now let me release the red hub here. So now I, I'm moving to the third uh, knob here, which again has a black arrow, and I'm turning this into the black direction, in the in the direction of the black arrow, and this will release the device. Okay, and I pull it back immediately. Okay, so now Ilona will check for the echo images. You see here the long axis. Yeah. Before the procedure, you see the moderate MR, and um, here, there, you see um, MR okay. after the procedure. Yeah we see a fantastic uh, result. So on this side you see uh, zero degree degrees before the procedure, after the procedure. So regarding the clinical outcome, at six months there was a mild MR. The heart failure medication could be reduced. There was no edema, no dyspnea, and no other heart failure symptoms that were still present in the patient. There was no further heart failure hospitalizations. However, the patient passed away two years later due to cancer. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.